as the bell rings, we welcome you to worship on this third Sunday of the Easter season. We call your attention to the announcements as they're printed in the bulletin. A successful grief share, first opening, 12 of us gathered for grief share last Monday. It will continue this Monday, 6.30 here at the church. There's room for more. Come and join Grief Share, Monday, 6.30 to 8. Please note, Ministerial Association will meet here on Wednesday following our Zoom prayer meeting. Good News Club will be at the regular time, 3.30 on Wednesday. And Wednesday night, our session will be 7.30 here at the church. Also, Sharpsburg Bible Study on Thursday this week. Any other announcements that need to be made? Patty. Serve and return dishes on Thursday for the senior program that meets here at the church. Anyone willing to help with that? Let Patty know. Let us worship God. Turn in your hymn book and remain seated. 204. Because he lives.
Jesus said, Why are you frightened and doubtful? He showed them his hands and feet, inviting them to touch. They were joyous, yet at the same time disbelieving. Jesus said to them, Have you anything to eat? They gave him a piece of fish. He ate it in their presence. Then Jesus opened their minds to understand Scripture. He spoke of the Messiah's suffering and death. Then he spoke of his rising from the dead on the third day. Next, Jesus spoke of repentance and forgiveness. Finally, he said, you are my witnesses. Jesus spoke of repentance and forgiveness. So every Sunday we come before God repenting for our sins, confessing our sins that we might receive forgiveness. So please join me in the prayer of confession printed in your bulletins. Merciful God, forgive our failure to be your faithful witnesses. We get frightened. We are disbelieving. We are not sure how to best serve you. We are quiet when we should speak, and speak when we ought to be quiet. Forgive us, we pray, and restore us to your favor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Brothers and sisters, I declare to you the truth. <clears throat> In Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. In response, stand as we sing hymn 195, Christ Jesus Christ is risen today.
Jumping and leaping 
sing and praising God, the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. I think you got us. We're going to try it one more time now. I think we've got our clocks down, all right? Peter and John went to pray. Here we go. Peter and John went to pray. They met a lame man on the way. They asked for alms and held out his alms. And this is what Peter did say. Silver and gold have I got. But that which I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he went jumping and leaping and praising God. Jumping and leaping and praising God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Beautiful. Now, we have in today's bags a picture of all different kinds of people. And maybe you could color them each differently. A representative that, as Christy said in the, the pardon, assurance of pardon, that Jesus sins are for love. Jesus died for the sins of the whole world. And thank you. Yes. And maybe, Elizabeth, you could carry one to the back, too. And thank you. Prayer concerns today. And I'll start with John. Maybe you're going to start. No. Uh, yeah, for your for your aunt Janet and the family morning at this time. Thank you. At a request, I flew to Canada last Thursday. I was able to be with my aunt Janet for the last roughly seven hours of her life after which she died early Friday morning, so I will be going back to Canada next week, not this week, um, for the funeral. But special prayers for my mother, Marilyn, <coughs> and her family, which includes me. And you'll hear more about Aunt Janet in the sermon today, because I started working on the sermon as she was sleeping under morphine um, and finished it after she died. So thank you for your prayers and the prayers of all of you who knew I was going and kept me in prayer. Others today? Pray for Donnie Beck who's got a lot of complications. For Donnie Beck, I announced last week he was going to have a leg amputated, but his, they decided his heart was not strong enough, or at least it was complicated. And so they did not do the amputation, but he's seeing some more doctors, and we'll see what happens. Don and Pat, thank you. For Ryan, going through a time of anxiety and anger. We'll pray for you, Ryan. Is that okay? Thank you. You're welcome. For Val and for her aunt Shirley Bow, we lift you up. Um, Prayers of healing for Corrine Walter. Corrine Walter, now been in the hospital some 10 days and has more hospital stay ahead of her. A very serious infection, though I understand she's likely coming back closer on Tuesday, is that right? Hopefully, yes. Hopefully. And pray for. Nikki and Holly, her daughters who have been alternating time out there, and, and son Royce also went to be with her. But for Corrine, we lift up prayers. Ron Fitzgerald's here with us today, and his wife Susie asked for a special prayer for both 
of her sisters. Pat Hass has been coming and helping us with Good News Club, and she fell on Wednesday night, broke her hip. In the hospital in Creston right now, but moving to Corning tomorrow, is that right, Ron? I think they postponed it till Tuesday now. Postponed it till Tuesday. <coughs> Prayers for <coughs> Pat Hass and also for <coughs> Susie's sister, Carol, whose husband recently died and now her health is not good and Susie has gone to be with her, is that right? Also prayers for Susie, for strength as she tries to take care of two sisters. Others today? Kim, I do have some good news. We have a, a new business in town and she is uh, one of our members of the parish. It's Angie M Miller, and she has her beauty shop legacy right there by the Tiger Gate. Angie Miller has opened up shop here in Lenox, and that is a joy, one of our own. Thank you for lifting that up. Yes, and her grandchildren were up here at the children's measure, right? We lift up Angie and celebrate her business now being in Lenox. Others? Darlene had a fall, a stroke, yes, we think, perhaps. We need to lift up Darlene Freeman, and also for Leila Douglas as she heals from her surgery, carpal tunnel. Jasper Ambrose died out at Vintage Park. Jasper is a wonderful, was a great neighbor to Jeannie Fitzgerald, just a wonderful, gentle soul. And so if we would lift up Jasper in our special prayers, actually his family. I talked this morning to his niece, Nancy, who was very broken up, uh, loved Jasper very dearly. So we lift up that family as they prepare. And also continue to lift up Janine's family. Our church will host a funeral service for Hal Dean Beach. Not this coming Saturday, but two Saturdays from now on the 27th. Um, Hal Dean, a former Lennox person, who part of the large Beach family. And if you want to know more about the Beach family, ask Janine. <laughs> Others? Let us join, well, two more. The news this morning, Iran launched 300 missiles at Israel. All of them were shot down, as I understand it, but now there's talk of retaliation, things spreading in the Middle East. Our prayers for peace for the people of Israel, Gaza, the whole Middle East, and continue to remember our Christian brothers and sisters in Ukraine, and Russia. Let us pray. So Lord, we're coming to you with unspoken prayers because each of us has something on our hearts that we lift up to you. Not that we wanted to name publicly, but that we wanted to name to you. Bring healing and comfort and strength. Give homes to the homeless and food to the hungry and help us be your instruments. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of family. We pray for Marilyn, Marilyn Maxa, for all her family as we mourn together Aunt Janet's death. We pray for Donnie Beck, facing an unknown future, but he is your child, Lord. Guide and direct him and his family. Heal him, I pray. We pray for Rival, one of our own, so faithful in serving you, Lord. Take away his anxiety and fill him with peace. We pray for Valeria as well and for her aunt Shirley. We pray for Susie Fitzgerald and her sisters, Pat and Carol. Be with them, O oh God. Bring healing and give Susie strength. We pray for Corrine Walter for healing. Darlene Freeman for healing. Leila Douglas for healing. We pray for the Beach family 
the Ambrose family. And we celebrate with Angie opening a new shop. Oh God, we pray for peace in the Middle East. Clueless is how to bring it about except to pray to you. We pray for peace in the Ukraine. Uncertain how to bring it about except to lift it up to you. Lord God, hear these, the prayers of your people, as we pray together the prayer that you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our hymn of meditation, 202, sing a song of celebration. It's to a familiar tune. Join me. Remain seated. 202. Receive these, the offering. 
offerings of your people, and may they be used for your ministry and mission. Amen. You may be seated. So if you peeked at the sermon title in the bulletin, it's one of my favorite sayings, except with a twist. My favorite saying, out of the frying pan into the fire, but I've entitled the sermon, Out of the Fire and Into the Frying Pan. Because the situation that Peter and John found themselves in in today's scripture is perhaps not as dire as the one they faced on Easter night. They were frightened. They were locked in an upper room, petrified, terrified that the authorities were going to come and nail them on a cross too. They felt like they were in the middle of a firestorm until Jesus came among them, preaching peace, breathing on them and giving them the Spirit of God. And then things started to change. For the next 40 days, Jesus appeared to them off and on, and finally on the 50th day, or the 40th day rather, he ascended into heaven on the 50th day, the Holy Spirit came upon them in power. And Peter and John were changed. So changed that today's scripture finds them going to the Jewish temple, the high holy place of the scribes and Pharisees who had put Jesus to death. Saved out of the fire, they purposefully and intentionally went into the frying pan. They were bold, fearless, fully prepared to carry on Jesus' mission and ministry in his name. I want to pause for a minute on that. Everyone who says, I'm a Christian, then all your words and deeds are done in his name. Christian literally means follower of Christ. And that leads us to wonder, are we as committed as Peter and John were? Are we as committed to caring for the sick, to praying for their healing? Are we as committed to peacemaking? For remember, Jesus' first words to them was, Peace, my peace I give to you. Are we as fully committed to sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ? 
which might include a reminder to some that we participate by our sins and putting to death the author of life? Do we realize that we have no power apart from Jesus and no righteousness except that given to us by the grace of God? There's a lot to remember here in this passage, including that we can also heal in the name of Jesus Christ. So, why don't we? I heard a preacher, an old preacher, once say, we are unable to heal in the name of Jesus as Peter and John did because we cannot say silver and gold have I none. It's our clinging to silver and gold, he said, that disempowers us. Hmm. I pondered that for 40 years. Eight days ago, as I was returning from the Kansas City airport after visiting my daughter and new granddaughter and son-in-law in North Carolina, I stopped at the quick trip to get my favorite fast food meal, a roller dog with jalapenos and a Dr. Pepper. And as I was paying for it, all of a sudden the clerk yelled out, only two more minutes to buy your lottery tickets. After that, you won't be a part of the drawing that's going to happen tonight. And before I could get my hot dog and Dr. Pepper and flee, a man came running saying, $40, I want $40 worth. Someone else said, $20 worth for me, $20. And as I'm going out the door, I watch this pack descending. The next morning, the second Sunday of Easter, guess what the lead news was? Somebody in Oregon bought the winning Powerball ticket and won all money in the world. That's news. And all of a sudden, it occurred to me that trying to get rich has moved beyond being our national pastime <coughs> to being our national religion. Forget selling our possessions, giving the proceeds to the poor and following Jesus. No, we no longer see any conflict between striving to get rich on the one hand and following Jesus on the other. <clears throat> Maybe that pastor was right. We can't say in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk, because we can't say silver and gold have I none. But Peter and John are apostles of a different gospel, not the modern gospel of greed is good. They had no riches. No worldly power. In fact, their fear after Jesus appeared to them is that they couldn't carry on the demands of apostleship. And in the weeks after Jesus rose, they returned to fishing. Though Jesus had called them away from fishing to be fishers of men, but they didn't think they were worthy. But again, Jesus called out to them and offered forgiveness and breathed on them the Holy Spirit and sent them out to heal and baptize and teach and make disciples and bear witness to the power of God in the name of Jesus Christ. They made it clear, Peter and John did, after today's healing, that it was not them, not their power, that was able to heal this man. It was God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Jesus Christ, who empowered them through faith to heal this man. And sure enough, the man responded by jumping and leaping and praising God. He gave the power and the glory not to John or Peter, but to God. My Aunt Janet was a Christian woman through and through. And 
She taught me many things that go right together with the scripture today. Some of you remember that there was a time in her life that Aunt Janet used to travel here every year. She came for holidays. She came for Presbyterian Sunday School. She was baptized by immersion in the Christian church. And one of the things she did when she came to church services here was to write down all the joys and concerns. And when she returned to Canada, she would continue praying for everyone for whom we were praying. And then she would ask me on the phone, how was Joe, you know, who had a heart attack? He's doing much better, Aunt Janet, I said once. He seems to have recovered fully. <laughs> Why do you seem so surprised, Timothy, she said. The prayers of the righteous avail of much. And though your prayers and the prayers of your church are important, don't you think it was your power or the church's power that healed this man? No. We pray for him in the name of Jesus. And that's who deserves all the praise. Don't you forget that, Timothy. That's one of the things I loved about my Aunt Janet that I also loved about my grandma, Warren, and add in my mother. I'm the preacher in the family, but they preach to me far more than I preached to them. In fact, my mother used to come with me until two years ago to church down at Sharpsburg, and then on the way up to Lenox, she would correct my sermon for me. Tell me the two or three points that I needed to add, things that I needed to take out, and things that I could emphasize more. And if I went off on any rabbit trail, she would say, Timothy, cut that out completely. <laughs> it was Aunt Janet and Mother Marilyn and Grandma Warren who constantly reminded me, stay humble. Take no credit for anything that God does, but expect God to do wonderful things as long as you do them in the name of Jesus. I also thought of Aunt Janet, and by the way, I wrote this part sitting in her room after she had died. She was a person in my life who was not afraid to chastise me to criticize me, to correct me. Just like Peter and John, they went right to the Pharisees and Sadducees and said, you're the ones who put Jesus to death. You killed the author of life. Then he turned around and called them friends. And then he called upon them to rent, repent, and turn back to God. I still remember when my mother was working at Kmart, we had just moved to Virginia. My dad took a job as a chaplain, wasn't making much money. My mom took a second job at Kmart, but had to work till 10 o'clock. My dad was often on call at the hospital, and so Aunt Janet once came to put us to bed. I still remember three boys in one room. We didn't go to bed very easily. Her coming up to us and saying, you all ought to be ashamed of yourselves. Your mother and dad working so hard, and here you are, you won't even go to bed at the right time. You grieve your mother and trouble your dad. When are you boys going to straighten up? And then she said, we need to pray right now. And she prayed that God might forgive us for the sins that we had committed. I thought of that as Peter turned to the Pharisees and Sadducees and said, you killed the author of life. But you know, Aunt Janet did that in love. And I think that's the key. In love and in the name of Jesus. And that brings us back around. Aunt Janet always held my feet to the fire. The title of today's sermon, Out of the Fire, Into the Frying Pan. So what's the difference between a fire and a frying pan? Well, a fire just burns wild and can harm, but a frying pan channels that fire 
Into it, you put the food and it cooks it and it nourishes others. So Jesus Christ, through his death and resurrection, has plucked us on the fire. We need not fear hell or death or sin. But Christ doesn't expect us just to stay on the rock of salvation and keep safe. No, he throws us right back into the frying pan. We're called to be bold, to take action, to be faithful witnesses to the power of God that exceeds the power of silver and gold. Mind you, silver and gold, our offerings can be used to do wonderful things in the name of Jesus. But the best thing we have is not silver and gold, but the good news of Christ, which brings salvation and hope and forgiveness to all. Christ calls us to be his witnesses. So let us bear witness to the grace, mercy, and love and forgiveness of God. In the name of Jesus, let us pray. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you for Jesus Christ. We thank you for Peter and John and their boldness. We thank you for Aunt Janet. We thank you for the saints who have gone before us and showed us the way, who boldly proclaim the gospel. Help us not to get sidetracked by a world in which the gospel is not preached. But help us to be your faithful witnesses now and forevermore. Amen. Our closing hymn is another hymn of Easter. Easter people, raise your voices. Stand as we sing together again, 200.